Thank you very much. Um, thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here at the beginning of this very important uh, launch of this very important institute. Um, I also apologize for not being able to give this presentation in Italian. Uh, we know the definition of people who can speak many languages, such as my friend Nir Koslowski, is multilingual. We know the definition of people who can speak two languages is bilingual. Well, we also know the definition of a person who only speaks one language is usually an American. And I fit strongly into that category. Um, what I understand my charge is to take a look at what's happening in the United States and fit it into kind of what the Institute is planning to do. Thank you, Dr. Bega, for um, a wonderful overview of the c complexity of this problem. Uh, but let me start off by being a heretic. One of the things that we always have to remember is we're talking about more than intellectual property. Intellectual property sits in the middle of an entire complex set of other intangible assets. And if you forget that, you end up with something that isn't as valuable as you'd like it to be. For example, there's a great story that goes around in the United States about a small company that was bought out about a large, by a large company bought out because they wanted their IP portfolio. Two years later, they realized that 90% of those particular patents were all developed by one person who they didn't hire and they didn't get a non-compete agreement. So essentially, they got last year's technology, not next year's technology. So you always have to place your IP portfolio in that larger context. And just to give you an example, this is what FASB uses for accountants. These are the activities and the uh, categories. Now, I'm going to go through some of these very quickly, and the slides will be available later. But my point here is there's only one category here that's called patented technology, the highlighted. All the rest of the other technologies, the other categories that accountants are required to look at in preparing financial statements. We all know the overall general intellectual capital framework that divides it up into human capital, structural capital, relationship capital. And then there's the uh, studies that have um, underpinned a lot of what uh, the earlier slide showed on the data from OECD, from Coronado, uh, Holton, and Seschel. Uh, these were path-breaking studies started in 2004 that outlined all of the various areas where you can have contributions, in this case, contributions to GDP coming from intangibles. These are not fanciful. All of these have data. And so far, I think there's about five countries who have gone through similar exercises to figure out what's happening in their particular economy based on all this list of intangibles. Okay, so what's happening in the United States and intangibles? Basically, two areas, measurement and management. And these pictures show a bunch of the things I want to go through very quickly. First of all, what's our main problem? The main problem is we're still in an industrial age mindset. And the quote from Keynes is, was appropriate for the shift from to Keynesianism. It's appropriate for the shift away from Keynesianism now. The problem we run into over and over again, both in corporations and in policymakers, is that somehow intangibles aren't real. They are, by definition, intangible. You won't believe the number of times I've walked into people's offices, senators' offices, and says, I'm not interested in tangibles. I'm interested in the tangible economy. Having manufacturers tell me, we don't have anything to do with these intangibles. My job on the factory floor has to do with tangibles, hard objects. Well, ask the question. If your workers walked out and the knowledge that was in their brains walked out, if you didn't have technology embedded in those machines, if you didn't have technology and intangibles embedded in the layout of those machines, what we used to call industrial engineering, if you didn't have relationships with your suppliers, if you didn't have financing, all you have on that factory floor is a bunch of scrap metal. It's all intangible assets. But getting people to understand that is the difficulty. Okay, first, 
First goal, measurement. Can we define these things? Can we get a handle on what their size is? And the answer is yes. Um, long quote from the US Bureau of Economic Statistics. The key part is the highlighted part. Understanding the role of these activities in the economy is critical to accurately measuring and encouraging a strong US economy. So the US government at the statistical level understands this and is moving in that direction. They've done a number of studies. We have uh, Leonard Nakamura from the Fed who says that the gross investment in intangibles is over one trillion annually. This was before the bubble. Uh, Coronado et al. showed that there's at least three trillion dollars missing from the accounts in the United States. The shift from intangible to tangible has been dramatic. We've seen intangible assets as a percent of business output rise dramatically. Tangibles have basically stayed the same, dropped off a little bit at the end there. But the real story here is the rise of business investment in intangibles, whether they know it or not, whether they acknowledge it or not, those investments are taking place. Okay, so what's happening on the measurement side in the United States? The BEA, Bureau of Economic Analysis, is now going to include GD, into GDP in 12, 2013 R&D as an asset. Rather than booking it as an expense as the way it is now, it will actually be a depreciated asset. Well, the accountants have been telling me for years they can't do that. We can't put that on company books because we don't know how to deal with it. Well, once the statisticians start including it in the GDP, the pressure, I believe, is going to build on the accountants to start doing the thing on the corporate level. Same thing is, going to, is happening with investment in motion pictures and sound recordings. It will be included in GDP as an asset as in 2013. BEA has a whole research program going on in terms of other intangible assets. It's going to take a little bit longer because, again, go back to that mindset, especially on education, human capital. People are very resistant of the idea saying human capital, investments in education is a quote asset and not an expense. But slowly but surely people are coming around to that. 